Uh, Mr. De Winter, do you know anything of these holes ripped in the plank? Nothing was I must remind you, you're still under oath. Do you doubt Mr. Tab's statement? Not at all. He's a boat builder. He knows what he's talking about. So you would agree with Mr. Tab? That a boat with such holes driven in the planking and the sea cocks open could not float for more than 10 or 15 minutes? Oh, yes. Now, that the boat was um, maliciously tampered with before Mrs. De Winter went for her evening sail. Had that been the case, the boat would have sunk at her moorings. No doubt. Therefore, we must assume uh, that whoever did take the boat out that night must have driven those holes in the planking and opened the seacocks. Yes, I suppose so. And yet we've already heard that the door of the cabin was shut, the portholes were closed, and your wife's body was lying on the floor of the cabin. Yes. Now, added to this is the uh, extraordinary information that holes had been driven in the planking and the sea cocks were open. Now, does not that um, strike you, Mr. De Winter, as being very strange? It does, certainly. You have no suggestions to make? No, none at all. <coughs> well, Mr. De Winter, painful as it may be, I'm afraid it is my duty to ask you a very personal question. Yes? Uh, were relations between you and the late Mrs. De Winter perfectly happy? Will someone take my wife outside? She's going to faint. I'll take you to the car. No, I'd rather stay, Frank. I want to wait for Maxim. He might live rather a long time. Why should he be? What are they going to do? That man, Tab, has altered everything. They'll have to approach it from a different angle. What angle? What do you mean? Well, you heard what he said. They won't believe in an accident anymore. That's ridiculous. How can he tell what happened? What are they trying to prove? Oh, I don't know. Come on. That man was there, that man that came to see Mrs. Danvers. Jack Flavel, yes, I saw well, him. Well, they were sitting there together. Yes, I know. Well, why was he there, Frank? What right had he to go to the inquest? He was her cousin. Well, I don't trust them. They might do something. They might make mischief. Try not to worry. Come along. I'm sure everything will be all right. Do please try to answer the question without unnecessary comment, Mr. De Winter. I'm not conducting this inquiry for my own amusement. Well, that's rather obvious. So let me ask you again. Had you and your late wife quarreled? I can't remember. Well, did you ever quarrel? Well, of course we quarreled from time to time. And on this particular evening? I have already told you. My wife had gone to London. I dined with Mr. Crawley. We had no opportunity to quarrel. Where was the motive? They didn't seem to think one was necessary. Oh, God, I'm so tired. I can't see, I can't hear, I can't feel anything. Is Frank with you? No, no, he's gone to see the vicar. Why the vicar? Something has to happen this evening, now that the inquest is over. Rebecca. 6.30, it's all arranged. I'll come with you. No, no, no. Frank will be there. And Colonel Julian. Colonel Julian? He's the local magistrate from Kerith. Thank you. You met him at the ball. Well, why is he going? No particular reason. 
Oh, I've asked them to dine with us this evening. I hope you don't mind. Oh. He's been very decent, Colonel Julian. Pulled all kinds of strings. Made everything very much easier. Let me come too. No. No, my darling. I'd rather you didn't. Excuse me, madam, do you know if Mr. De Winter will be long? No, for it's not very long. There's a gentleman to see him, madam. I'm not quite sure what I ought to say. He's so very insistent about seeing Mr. De Winter. Well, who is it? Anyone you know? It's Mr. Favell, madam. I see. I think perhaps I'd better see him. Very good, madam. Mr. Favell, ma'am. I'm afraid Maxim isn't here. So I see. Oh. Wouldn't it be better if you made an appointment to see him at the office in the morning? Oh, I don't mind waiting. How are you feeling? Too bad you fainting like that at the inquest this afternoon. It must have been the heat. Mr. Favell, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm very tired. It's been an exhausting day. Why don't you see Maxim in the morning? Yes, I've had an exhausting day, too. Exhausting, upsetting, and extremely unpleasant. Rebecca was my cousin, you know. I was damn fond of her. Yes, I'm sorry. We were brought up together. Always tremendous pals. Liked the same things, the same people. Laughed at the same jokes. I suppose I was fonder of Rebecca than anyone else in the world. And she was fond of me. All this has been a bloody shock. Yes, I'm sure it has. Max knows how I felt about Rebecca. He won't be surprised to find me here. What do you mean? <laughs> Suicide. Do you call that justice? That doddering old fool of a coroner didn't know what he was talking about, did he? But we know. Don't we? We know it wasn't suicide, don't we? I think you'd better leave, Mr. Favell. Now, don't come the high and mighty with me. I've come here to do you a favor, a big favor. For both of you. What sort of a favour? <laughs> That's better. I thought you'd be interested. You know, I could make things damned unpleasant for Max if I tried, if I wanted to. You too come to that. Do you know what this is? It's a letter from Rebecca. The last thing she wrote before she died. Would you like to read it? Well, go on. I think you might find it interesting. <coughs> yeah. I was right, wasn't I? That's interesting. What do you want? Ah, well, that's what I came to see old Max about. Now, the last thing I want in the world is trouble. You must believe that. Let's keep it all in the family. That's my motto. And we are all part of the same family, you know. You, me, Max, Rebecca. All part of the same big, happy family. Max is what you might call the head of the family, and I'm the poor relation, not a role I enjoy very much, to tell you the truth. In fact, to speak quite bluntly, Mrs. De Winter, I'm most unhappy about it. I mean, here's old Max with all his money, his house, social position, pretty young wife, and here am I with, well, 
shall we say, considerably less. I'm not a greedy man. I don't want you to think that. But with a settlement of two or three thousand a year, I could jog along quite comfortably. Leave this house. Maxim, What the hell are you doing He's here? He's got a letter. Get out. Maxim, I should please. listen to her if I were you, old man. It's important. What letter? Well, show him. Show him the letter. It's the last one she wrote. Rebecca. So now it's blackmail. I wouldn't call it that. What would you call it? Well, think of your wife, old man. Do you want her to spend the rest of her life as the widow of a murderer? I think you should show this to Colonel Julian. He's the local magistrate. I'm sure he'd be interested. Maxim, please. It's good bluff, but it won't work. No, no, it's no bluff. Colonel Julian's here now. He and Frank Crawley are dining with us. Had you forgotten? Fair enough, old man. If you want to hang yourself, it's all the same to me. In here, Colonel Julian, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Thank you. Well, good evening, Mrs. De Winter. Feeling better, I hope. Yes, thank you. Good, good evening, Frank. Good evening. This is Jack Lavelle, my late wife's cousin. I don't know whether you've met. Yes, your face seems familiar. I probably met you here in the old days. Quite probably. Mr. Favell thinks there's been a miscarriage of justice. Uh oh, in what respect? I'm not satisfied with the verdict given at the inquest this afternoon. Oh, isn't that for Mr. De Winter to say? No, I don't think so. Rebecca wasn't just my cousin. If she'd lived, we'd have been married. Good God. You see. Oh, well. Is this true, De Winter? It's the first I've heard of it. He knew we were lovers. Yes, I knew that. I see. All right, Favell, what exactly is your trouble? This letter was written a few hours before Rebecca died. Read it. See if you think the woman who wrote that letter had made up her mind to kill herself. <coughs> I tried to ring you from the flat, but could get no answer. I'm going down to Manders right away. I shall be at the cottage this evening. And if you get this in time, will you get the car and follow me? I'll spend the night at the cottage and leave the door open for you. I've got something to tell you, and I want to see you as soon as possible. Rebecca. Oh, did you go down to the cottage? No, I didn't get back until four o'clock in the morning. I thought it was too late to drive all that way. What did she want to tell you? Do you know? No, I don't. I see. Well, on the face of it, you would seem to be right. Suicide is neither mentioned nor implied. Suicide never entered her thoughts. No woman would write a letter like that and then go off and drown herself. It doesn't make sense. It's impossible. Then what did happen? Can you tell us that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. She was murdered. She was murdered by her husband. <laughs> Look at him. He can't even deny it. He hasn't even got the guts to deny it. Because I knew I'd seen you before somewhere. You were in court this afternoon. What if I was? Well, why didn't you speak out then? Why didn't you show that letter to the coroner? Because he wanted to try blackmail first. He offered to keep quiet for 3,000 a year. That's beside the point. What do you mean, beside the point? No, 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 he's right, it is. He's made a very serious accusation. And whether he was trying to blackmail De Winter or not, that accusation still stands. He can't prove a thing. I've got proof to hang you three times over. Aren't those holes in the boat proof you killed her? Not unless you can bring a witness who saw him do it. Witness be damned. Of course, De Winter did it. Who else would kill Rebecca? Oh, Kenneth has a large population. I might have done it myself. You appear to have as much proof against De Winter as you would have against me. <laughs> I see. You're going to hold his hand through all this, are you? You won't let him down because he's dined with you and you've dined with him. Very cosy. Well, let me tell you this. For once, I've got the law on my side and I'm going to use it. Believe me, I am going to use it. It's the law that demands a witness, Farrell, not me. And you'll get nowhere without one. What witness could there be? It's a private bay. You know that as well as I do. It's the Manderley Bay and no one goes down there. Just a minute. Just a minute. There might be a witness after all. That fellow on the beach. What's his name? That halfwit. 